until the word of God that you have heard, until it leaves your human spirit with all of the character of God. It doesn't matter how many times you've heard it. If that word has not left your human spirit with all of the character of God, if it has not given your mind the culture of truth, you should not cease to meditate it. You should not cease to hear it. And do not forget this. Until faith has achieved its highest objective, you must not stop to feed your faith. And to feed your faith, you will have to keep hearing the truth again and again. Faith comes by hearing. The more you hear it, the more you understand it. The more you understand it, the more the faith that's born on your inside. There are different types of faith. There is weak faith and there is strong faith. There is little faith and there is great faith. You see, the kind of faith you exhibit depends on your understanding of the information at your disposal. A truth that hasn't given the culture of truth to your mind should not be archived, should not be kept aside. So, this is what you have to learn to do right now. Learn to crave a truth that you heard that has not shaped your spirit. Learn to crave it. The Bible tells us, Blessed are those that hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. How much God satisfies you depends on how much you hunger for the truth. So, never set the truth aside because you've heard it before. There are those who have read the Bible many times. They keep reading it. You know why? The word of God is that manner that's ever fresh. It never grows stale. And you see, the amount of revelation you have of the word of God is what determines the kind of life you live. We have been called to rest. Our rest is tied to our revelation until a truth has formed the revelation. A revelation that has become a consciousness. You don't stop to listen to it. And so I challenge you to learn the word. You, you are supposed to hear the word of God, a message again and again until you start living out the message. Because we become what we hear through practice. As if we have not become what we've heard, then we have to go back to hear it again until we become what we hear. And so let's, let's, let's become hungry for a truth until it forms the character of the spirit until it brings us to an environment of truth where we can't live without it. Make that a habit for yourself. It's a choice you have to make. It's a choice you have to make. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We are marching forward. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Let me hear you sing that song. We are marching forward. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just listen carefully. We read um, one of the sections how that a man went to sow seed and then some fell on the good ground. And of those that fell on the good ground, they yielded differently. Same seed, same sower, but why different results? It's what you have in the life of Christians. Same ministry, same message, but some will prosper more. Why? Because some are doing more. In the same place right now, where I'm taking that song, and some are taking it with excitement, some of you are thinking of something else. This is why we don't prosper alike. Because there are people who have plunged themselves into truth. The moment you told them, it became their principle for living. Why others are still negotiating if they practice it or not. It's not powerful prayer you need. That's not what you need. It's not what you need. People, there are people who are going up and they're looking for powerful prayers. You don't need powerful prayers. What you need are the things I've been teaching you. But you see, even if you were to meet with Jesus today, 
and he tells you everything, he will still let you know that now that he's told you everything, the responsibility is now yours. There is nothing the Lord would want to tell you that I have not told you. The things that God had in mind for you, I have told you. But the question is, why do God's children not prosper with all the truth they are exposed to? Because the truth you hear is only as effective as the measure of practice you give to it. The truth you hear is only as effective to the measure of practice you give to it. As it says, be not hearer only deceiving your own selves. Meaning hearing alone is not enough. Hearing alone is not enough. Be not hearers only. It tells you hearing alone is not enough. You see, the word of God is not for hearing. It's for living. It's for living. You better hear that today. The word of God is not for hearing. It is for living. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The word of God is for living. How do you live by God's word? By putting it to practice. That's how to live by God's word. You put it to practice. It becomes your values, your principles for living, your internal value system. It's not for hearing. Hearing God's word does not change anyone until you start practicing it. It's as, it, you see, it just in a synonymous sense, it's more like, uh, it's, it's like going to a, a, a pharmacy to get the most powerful drugs. The most powerful drugs. You pick the drugs, you pay for the drugs. Like you came here, you have picked the drugs. You spent money coming, you spent your time coming. But that won't do you any good just by buying the best drugs. When you get home, Number one, you have to take the drugs. Number two, you have to follow the prescription. As I must and they tell you, follow it religiously. Because they know if you don't, it won't work. Where do you think the idea came from? It came from the word of God. He said the word of God is medicine. How do you use medicine? This is the problem with Christians. They think if I can just hear the word, everything will be all right. No. No, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. The word of God is for living. But how do you live by it? By practicing it. Yes, the other day, I told you, when you offer to the Lord, when you offer praise or whatever it is, minister it. Now, I'm taking a song. If you notice, our hands were lifted when I said, let's take this song. Because the Lord spoke to me and I heard this song in my spirit. And so what we were supposed to do, minister it. And I'm looking in front. Some are ministering it. I'm looking beyond the, this first uh, part. Some of you are just there. Question is, it's like Jesus asking those guys that came to meet him. He said, when you went to John, what was it you were looking for? When you went to the wilderness, what was it you thought you would see? So God is looking at that and he's asking you, when you came to the camp, what was it you came for? You ministered this song. It stays with you. If you are always needing a reminder to, to, put, to put truth to practice, then it means you have a problem. If you're always needing a reminding, always needing a reminding to, be, to, put, to put truth to practice, then it means you have a problem. That they always have to remind you to practice the word of God. It means it, the, word have not, the, the word of God have, has not become your principle yet. That's what it means. That God's word hasn't become your principles for living. Why do we, why do we, why do we lose touch with spiritual principles so quickly? Why do we lose touch with spiritual principles so quickly? Why? It's because we don't value them. What you value, you will hold fast to. Is it truth? What you value, you will hold fast to it. 
It becomes not valid God's word. And yet, that is God's remedy to all our life's challenges. His word. His word. It shows you how disciplined God is in seeing or watching how well his children are doing. How well they are doing with the truth. This is why no matter what we do, some person will still end up in hell. It pains me a lot because it's not about me. Myself and a host of us here have been settled for life. Settled for life. You know, one of the things that I have never been able to answer properly is how that people don't get tired of suffering. Because if I were in your shoes and I'm being talked to by someone like this, I would drop every mannerism I have. I want to be like this guy. Especially someone who opens up to us. Some of you are not tired of suffering. All you just want is, Reverend, say the word. I have said the word. I have said the word. Every word of God requires a doing. Requires a doing. You must do the word. God said, let there be light. And you read in your Bible and there was light. But read further. He says, and God made two great lights. <laughs> read your Bible. Did you read in that same Bible that God spoke things into being and all, all we have is that they became. But that's not actually correct. Because by the time you go to the Psalms, it says creation is the work of your hands, not of your mouth. I, I thought I thought creation was the work of God's hands a work of his, of his mouth <laughs> look at it thank you Holy Spirit just, just look at it book of Psalms I give you praise Lord Psalms 8 verse 3 Book of Psalms chapter 8, verse 3. I want you all to look at it. One, two, read. Oh, stop. It's not the work of your mouth. Not the work of your mouth. That means after he spoke them into being, he had to form them with his hands. When I consider the heavens, the work of their fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained. Ah. Oh, not that he said, let them be stand or stuck. He made them with his hands. That's what it tells us. The hand of the diligent bear rule. Not the mouth of the diligent, the hands of the diligent. So if you think, be blessed, and you are just blessed, and that's it, you lie. Read your Bible. God blessed Isaac, and that's him where he sold. That's what the Bible tells you. Is that not what it tells you? Look at this there. Genesis 26. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a lot of, we have um, a couple of verses to get there. But it says, the Lord, there was someone in that year. And I said to Isaac, do not go. Stay in Gera. I will bless you. I will bless you. <laughs> God said, Isaac, I will bless you. I said, I bless your father, Abraham. So I will, I'm with you. I will multiply you. After God said this, he says, and Isaac sold that year. We'll get to giving in a moment. Because of you, you are not giving. You expect miracle everywhere. Everywhere. You like those songs that talk about miracles everywhere. A lazy man has no future. I told you, a lazy king has no domain. There's no future for the lazy man. No food for the lazy man. Just want to be giving, giving, giving. What kind of life is that? 
Why not get up and do something? Say, what do I have to do? Many things. Lots of things. Okay, come on, be part of my team members. You come together to incubate ideas, develop the ideas, and, and let's form the ideas. Let's, let's do some of the ideas. You are doing something. At least something. You're doing something. I have people who pray for me. They meet every week. Pray for me. Pray for T, um, C, T, um, Good Life Fast. Pray for TGN. They meet every week. Tuesdays and Thursdays. They meet every day. Every week, rather. They always pray for us. Most of them are, are, are my siblings. Always, that's what they do with their lives. That's work. That means they're in my employ. They're working. For such, you don't expect to go and be doing store. No, they are doing something bigger than any business. Pray while you're everywhere. People are praying for you. That's work. And then God is honoring them for that. That's work. You are not doing any of those. All you just want is Reverend say the word. And after that, let things just fall down. Or maybe God will move someone to give you. I told you every blessing must be multiplied. Even if God moves someone to give you, how, how often should God move people? How long should he move people? Have not moved one or two? Shouldn't you now move? One to, if God were to move everyone, who would God move you to bless? No, I, I see, you hear a man, full-grown man that's not sick, saying he doesn't want to do anything. So how do you want to survive? Abraham at 100 was still rearing carols. And then you are old. All right. You keep coming collecting prayers and nothing is changing. Come up be collecting prayers now. Prayer collector. Tax collector. Why people are using their minds and their hands that you just want to use your mouth But please, before I, I, I spend time on that, I'm challenging you to internalize the word of God that you are taught and start practicing them. Internalize the word of God that you are taught. Internalize them and begin to practice them. Starting from now. If you are taught that lifting of holy hands is very important, then start practicing it. If you are taught that and ministering the song of the Lord is important. Then start practicing. That's how to prosper. That's how to prosper. By practicing them, you're doing something. That's how to prosper. By not practicing them, you're not doing anything. And that's not the way to prosper. So by doing something does not only mean get a job. Of course you should do that. Another thing, but I'm, I'm talking about even just these basic ones. Practicing it is doing something. Oh, lift your hands towards heaven. You do. It's, that's doing because there's a doing there. An action is there. You do something. You lift your hands towards heaven. How great they are. That's something. They said, let's sing this song. You sing it. That's something. Elijah said to Nehemiah, deep. He went to deep. That's something. He had to do something. You must do something. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't... But, but when I say do something, it doesn't mean it, it's not an exclusive of get a job, get some no starting from here because what job do you want to get inside church right now? Do something. Do something. We are jumping, jump. That's a doing. The things I am teaching you. Are the things I have practiced for these years and they have made me into who I am today. With all that we did last night, if I with all that I did, you didn't do nothing. With all that I did last night, I still had time with the Lord this morning. Speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues. That's the problem with many Christians. They see us on the altar, and all they want is to be like, be like us, the one they see on the altar. That's what they want. Just want to wear suit also. They come from want to wear suit. They dress nicely. They think the secret is in outfit. <laughs> the secret is in even when we are feeling pains on our legs, we are still there. 
Aya. You are betting and to Cabre Alabas. You know, the Lord told me, He said, You haven't welcomed us specially into the year because of our relationship. Because every time I always say, Heavenly Father, happy new month, I always welcome them in specially. Relationship that was beat over the years. Be there. Want to wear the same suit, <laughs> wear the same shoes. When we take this off, we get to work. We don't go to sleep. We we'll take them off, we we'll get to work. Meetings are already lined up after now. I've lined up my meetings. That's what we do. We are not sleeping. Lined up my meetings to start working and be reading projects. Yet I'm having meetings. Tomorrow you say, it's not the same grace. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, you have to know what grace is for. First Corinthians 15 verse 10. Let's end this whole, this whole um, uh, concept of grace that we don't have. The wrong concept we, don't, we have of grace. Let's end this wrong concept of grace. Look at, look at this. Um, uh, if you don't mind, I just need us to correct the myth about grace. Because there are so many myths about grace. You know what myth is, right? Okay. Generally accepted or believed through that are not proven. A myth. M-Y-T-H-S. Myth. Okay, so let's end this myth about grace once and for all. <laughs> are you there? Because there are lots of things about grace that cannot be proven. But this can be proven. This is not a myth. This is truth. One true read pause this is all people read that's where they stop it's grace they don't know what it means it says but by the grace of god i am what i am then he, then he decided to explain what he's talking about he says and his grace <laughs> which was bestowed upon me was not in vain but i labored i labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So grace is for laboring. Grace is for laboring. You receive grace for prayer, for prayer. You labor in prayers. Receive grace for business. You, you labor in place of, of, of meditation, thinking, and creating. Grace is for doing something. Grace is for doing something. You may name, name your child Grace. That will not make her how successful if she's not doing anything. They have only named their children money, wealth, uh, prosperity. <laughs> Hallelujah. And prosperity ends up becoming a gate man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Refuse to be lazy. Refuse to be forgetful of the truth and endlessly content for the truth. Refuse to be forgetful of the truth. Refuse to be forgetful of the truth. Did you get that? Refuse to be forgetful of the truth. Every truth you are taught, be intentional in practicing it. Do you understand that? Be intentional in practicing every truth that you have been taught. Be intentional in practicing every truth that you have been taught. Is that okay? All right. Glory to God. Together, beautiful. So let's practice the truth that we've been taught. Lift your hands towards heaven. Thank you, Father. We love you with all our hearts. Blessed be your name forever in all our situations. In the name of Jesus. Now we acknowledge you. Even as we open our hearts and our minds for more and more and more. Oh, it's a new year. A year of happiness with reality. Oh, our mouth shall talk of your goodness our hearts shall meditate your greatness they that here shall believe not in vain but in truth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ oh thank you for your manifest presence in this place with a clap of the bow we acknowledge you thank you Lord thank you Lord hallelujah hallelujah you will never be the same again. I'm telling you, never be the same again. This year, 
the heavens will rejoice. We will make God proud this year. In a very special way. Hallelujah. You know, before we enter the year, the Lord said something to me that I, 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 I had to reconsider. He said, because of the blessings this year, the temptations will be many. He said, because of the blessings, the temptation will be many, will be a lot. But let me quickly tell ahead of time, you must not let any temptation survive. Temptation to buy a car when you don't need the car, don't do it. Temptation to travel out when God hasn't given you a word, don't do it. Because the temptation will increase, I'm telling you. Now you have the money. Now you have the comfort. And what's next? You, you just don't do anything. He says the temptation will be a lot, but don't give in. Now, it's not talking about um, immoral temptations, please. <laughs> in case your mind was going, ha, oh God, no, that's not what we're talking about at all. It has nothing to do with woman, man, nothing. It's the temptation to act ahead of God. Because you no longer need the things you were praying for. To, you know, you were waiting for God for provision before you act. Now you have the provision, you just act without asking. He says, woe to them that take counsel and not of me. Don't just say, I've been trusting God for money to send my daughter to one of these best schools. Ask the Lord which school to send your daughter to. That's the temptation I'm talking about. Say, the Lord gave you money. Why would you ask him, hey, hey, where are you coming from? Don't go and send your child to the school that he or she never comes back from. Don't you understand life? Life is spiritual. So I want to go on vacation and God has given me the money. Why ask God again? What? Hey, hey. The first time I wanted to go, go to D.C. for a weekend. <laughs> oh, if only you would listen. I had planned it. I was in Virginia at the time. I said, Lord, I wanted to just get a v- um, Washington D.C. because from Virginia to D.C. is just 45 minutes drive. So I said, okay, let me just go to D.C. But I said, Father, should I go or not? It's whatever you say. And I planned, my plan was that by um, the Saturday morning, when I get there, by Saturday morning, the next day, I'll go to White House and other, other areas. That was what I planned. And I prayed. Of course, I had not done anything. I prayed. But I felt my spirit not to go. I thought, this is just it now. But I said, Lord, whatever you say. And the Lord said, don't go. I said, okay, guess what? <laughs> Saturday morning that I would have been there, a gunman r- drove his car, ran into tourists, and began shooting. Mm-hmm. Pers- some persons died. That Saturday I would have been there. Because my plan was, get a tour guide, go there on Saturday morning. That Saturday morning, a, a, a gunman... R- drove his car into tourists and began shooting the same Saturday that I would have been there. When I want to go to a mall, I say, Father, what do you see? Because many times say, a gunman came into a mall and shot people dead. But I would have just said, ah, ah, why would I ask God? Just to enter the car and go. Now. Hey, temptation will be a lot. See, he says, in all your ways, this God who, are, who has blessed you in all your ways, acknowledge him. Ask him first. There is a way that seems right to a man. The end of it are the ways of death. Don't just make decisions because, oh, your prayers are, are answered and we we'll just do it. Don't let your wife bend you to do what you should not do. And don't let your husband bend you to do what you should not do. It doesn't matter what the person is. Don't do it. Bible tells us of Ahab. He says, none in Israel walked wickedness like Ahab, whose, ay, 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 whose wife Jezebel made him into. It was his wife who made him such a wicked man. It was Ahab's wife who made Ahab. Because Ahab wasn't like that. So how do you prove that? The dear Elijah gave Ahab prophecy. Ahab fed in repentance. Meaning Ahab. And you know what God said? He said, have you seen what Ahab has done? For this reason, it means Ahab was a good man. It was the wife who made him a devil. Don't let your, your partner, 
It may even be someone you are dating. Don't let them make you into a devil. If an nice wife was different, she would have saved her family. Yeah, I'm just advising you ahead of time. I know, I know so we say, well, we're in a relationship now. We should be allowed to do what we like. Okay. All right. I hope you're listening to me. Because if, you are, if your mind is not settled on this to always put God, you know what God will do? Let me tell you what he will do. Out of his love for you, he will, he will withdraw the blessing so you are not destroyed. Because God would rather you live a, a, an ordinary life, your whole life, than a life of wealth that will destroy you. So sometimes you are the reason we don't enjoy the blessing. Because we have the wrong attitude towards the blessing. Wrong attitude. The small money you have has now made you assistant pastor. Nobody can talk to you any longer. And God wouldn't want to lose you. So the best thing is withdraw and let him live the ordinary, mediocre life. I hope you are listening to me. Temptation will be a lot. Temptation. The Lord has been so, so gracious in giving us so much to learn. Give us so much to learn. We've talked about a couple of things. Host of things that are too good to be abandoned. Hallelujah. But you have to understand, you have actually been having a visitation of the Lord. Because the visitation of the Lord is not characterized exclusively by a visible presence. The visitation of the Lord is not characterized exclusively by a visible presence. A number of times, the visitation is in his word and not in his person. Because his word does exactly what his person would do. God's word does exactly what God's person would do. If an angel were to come to you, what the angel would tell you is the same thing as if you heard, if you heard the word of God without an angel. Do you understand? For example, who saw an angel for the birth of John the Baptist? Was his father who got pregnant. The mother, she didn't have to see an angel to get pregnant. And then the Mary saw an angel and also got pregnant. So the one who saw angel got pregnant. The one who didn't see an angel got pregnant. The word of God came to Elizabeth through the husband and that's all she needed. So you don't need an angel to certify you of God's visitation or to assure you that God has led you, what you need is his word. First Samuel chapter 3 and verse 21. You've got to run also. Amen. I want you guys to read it. One, two, read. All right, have you seen that? And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. I'm sure you would have thought it was in his person. But the first time it was in his person. Remember? Tells you, and it came to pass as Eli grew old, grew old and the light, before the light went out in the temple of the Lord, and the young man, Samuel, lay down to sleep. The Lord appeared to him and called him. Samuel, Samuel, you know the story, right? That was the first time. The second time, he says, and the Lord appeared again than he appeared before in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So you see, what he would have told Samuel in himself, as a matter of fact, what he told him in person was not even what he's telling me in his word. Are you hearing that? So what I'm trying to say is that we have been experiencing a visitation for this number of sessions by the word of the Lord. 
Psalms 107 from verse 17 to 20. Psalms 107, quickly, from 17. Can we have that on that screen? All right, everybody. Psalm 107, verse 17. Want to read. Next verse. This verse. Hold on a bit. They cried to the Lord in their trouble, and He saved them out of their distresses. Awesome. But then check the next portion how He saved them. Look at how He saved them. Look at it. Verse 20. All right. It is say He came, He sent His word. And heal them and deliver them from their destructions. So, God's word is his answer to your troubles and not God's person. God's word is the answer to your troubles and not God's person. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them. From their destructions, he sent his word. What has he been doing to us for these few days? He's been sending his word. What for? To heal those who need healing. To save those who are in distresses. To deliver those who are night destruction. God's word is for doing something. God, God sends his word to perform, to do things. Just the way Jesus sent us, that's the way God sends his word. When God sends his word, the word goes forth to become what God has sent it to do. He says, what has gone out of my mouth shall not return to me void. If it's gone, it doesn't return void. Are you listening to me? Yes, you will not be justified before the Lord to say the Lord didn't respond to your needs. His word is his response to whatever you are dealing with. His word is his response. Hallelujah. So don't take God's word for granted. If you are dealing with any challenge and he has sent his word, then you are good to go. But you see, that word must be given practice to. It must be given practice. You can't just receive it and that's it. No. You must give practice to it. You must give practice to it. And when you go um, analyze the scenario we just read in Psalm 107, you discover that this was a time in their lives where they erred against God and serpents were sent, fiery serpents were sent, and they began to destroy Israel. The serpents were biting and they were dying. And then Moses cried to the Lord, and God said to Moses, make a brazen serpent. Let the artificers, cunning craftsmen, make a brazen serpent and let them hang it. <laughs> People of God, you see where obedience is so powerful? He said, make a brazen serpent, hang it. Ah, my God. I've never been, I've not been able to really completely glean the revelation in that act of God. He said, make it and hang it and it shall come to pass. That if any man is beaten of a serpent, if he looks on this brazen serpent, he shall live. I said I have not been able to completely. It's so deep. If any man is beaten of a serpent, if he looks on this brazen one, this brass serpent, he will live. And whoever looks on it shall not be beaten at all. But you notice something. He sent his word and they were required to do something. And what was it? Look. Look. I said you must do something with God's word. It may not be a major, a major ask or a difficult ask. But you must do something. You must do something.
quickly. You still here? Beautiful. So, God has shown us so much. He's told us what our life assignment. We, we know the goal. I told you, I said, this going forward from this program, I said, from this program onward, um, we as a nation, we have two focuses and one goal. I told you that, right? Two focuses and one goal. I said, focus number one is that, is that of power, that we're going to be focusing on power for commanding the obedience of our rebellion, focusing on power this year like we have never done before. Two focuses. And it's not just for this year. And I read that to you. What that power is for is to command the obedience of all rebellion. I read in Isaiah 45, and it says, As truly as I live, the word is going to my mouth already. As truly as I live, unto me shall every knee bow, every knee, every knee, every knee. That means that's our number one goal, bringing all rebellion to obedience. And how do we do that? Through power. Through power. Are you still here? We do that through power. And he says, as, as I read to you yesterday, he says, they shall speak of his glory and talk of his power. And then I, I asked you guys, if you remembered what the statement I made regarding power, and I know if you didn't remember it, and thankfully I said, I said it not absolutely what I had told you now, and so I think um, Nancy had finally sent it to me yesterday, and it was awesome. Thank you. And look at what I told you guys some time ago, some time back. I said for our generation, and I was referring to the good life nation, I said for us in TGN. You there? I said for us in TGN, giving is our life. All right? I said, power is our showmanship. Power is our showmanship. Are you there? The kingdom is our language, not church. <laughs> the kingdom is our language. That's number three, right? Number four, I said... The culture of God's kingdom is our behavior. The culture of God's kingdom is our behavior. Uh, this, is, this is the message. This is the message where we're, we're building everything on now by the Holy Ghost. Hey, I said giving is our life. And that's where we're, we're going to do something quickly here. Giving is our life. If you belong in TDN, and you are not a giver. You are lost. I'm telling you, you are lost already. Giving is our life. We don't, we don't have time to, to, be, to, to, be, uh, to wait to be persuaded about giving. We don't have time for, for someone to come and prove it first. Giving is our life. Power. Is our showmanship. <laughs> oh boy, hallelujah. Pa. And just know that this statement is going to be there for a very long, long time. Showmanship. It's what we entertain with. <laughs> it's, for, it's what we perform with. That's what talking about. Showmanship. Performance. Theatrics to entertain. Pie is our showmanship. The kingdom. The kingdom is our language. It's there. The kingdom. Have you noticed that we talk kingdom more than anyone else? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The kingdom is our language. 
The culture of the kingdom is our behavior. That's why we tell you, look good. Do this. It's our behavior. We wonder where you got this appearance from. Because that appearance we see on you is not consistent with the culture of God's kingdom. When you look at the elements of a culture, we use those elements to assess your person, your appearance. All right. We use the elements of a culture. What are the elements of a culture? We don't have the time, but one of such is language. Elements of a culture. Language. Hmm? Taste. That means your food choices. Dress code. Dress code. Hmm? Moral code. Hallelujah. And the host of others, I don't have the time, but I don't want to say that. So we look at your dress code. Take your offerings, your tithes, first fruit, all of it. Father, we bless you. We just honor you. Pella, mean the crest, the belly, these are eka parodies. Branta, 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 grace the bella, dina, brafta fico, sayani medioclesi, legera up in Naglesia, as gera up in Lord, oh, the life of laughter has begun. <laughs> Say the Spirit of God. I just said that now. I just said that. The Lord said, the life of laughter has begun. We receive it with gratitude. We show our, our belief in that word, in praise and worship. In Jesus' name. Amen. So what is this in your hand? Laughter. What is this in your hand? Laughter. after me right now. Oh Lord God I believe that you love me and that you offered your son Jesus Christ in my stead who was offered for my offenses and was raised back to life for my justification. Today I ask for the Lord Jesus to be my savior. I ask for the remission of sins of my soul. I ask for eternal life of my spirit. And by faith, I receive the remission of sins in my soul. I receive eternal life from my spirit. And I declare, I am born again. I declare 
the life of God is coming to my spirit. I declare I now belong in the family of God. And so I ask you, Father, go and repeat after me. Come and place your mark of ownership on me by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, today I become a member of the family of God. I ask for your presence into my life with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name, I'm born again. I have eternal life and I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In Jesus' name, amen. You pray that prayer, open your mouth right now and pray with me in the Spirit because you have just been baptized of the Holy Ghost right now. Say, how do I know? Psalms 81 verse 10, it says, open your mouth wide and I'll feel it. So the rest of you pray with me just in 60 seconds. Jelemon gradi so faradiga libro co se pradina gaizo frote jelo practice kazam brodi gabadina i kapate la gloria perisato ibragina sacradi meredose frokitaba rabashi kabela endo cobra irakata labro co rabakashi Bere di di poso freke dele manda Krista rabababababokoso in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the spirit of dominion, the spirit of lordship, by the Holy Ghost, I trample and crush to pieces this day all my worries, all my cares, all my sorrows, all my troubles, all my limitations. I declare where these are bounded, grace did much more abound. By the abundance of your grace, I rule over them. From today, From today they, shall no they shall no longer have dominion, have dominion over, me, over me. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I, subdue them. I subdue them. I rule over them. Rule over them. For, as For as it is written, the Egyptians, the Egyptians you, see today, you see today, you shall see them. No more. no more. I declare, I declare these, challenges, these challenges, these worries, these, these cares, these, these troubles, and I see today, in the name of Jesus, I shall see them no more. No more. Speak in other tongues. Go ahead. You have dominion over them by the Holy Ghost. Dominion over sin, dominion over poverty, dominion over fear, dominion over lack, dominion over anxiety, dominion over suicidal thought, dominion over senseless desires, dominion over fornication, dominion over immorality, dominion over infertility, dominion, dominion by the Holy Ghost, Lava Ponte, Lake Bon Santo, Luba Haya, Luba Haya. Montoko Boshaha, Lihabana Minto Kobo, Ira Baselemanto, Ira Boko Toboto, Ipa Yatata, Tons of Emidai, Tons of Emidai, Luhabaha, Luhabaha, Ziva Cambregizo, Rene Prate, Paris and the Game and Drigo, Broke up with Gabriel Salamin. If a guy is so me and the Gaba, Julie Appadez, Jube Gamina, Missy for Ripataka, Zofia Tida, Zofia Tiza, Pela Sonfadima, Scalfri Ostovino, Liga Prickis Devo Minda Christi, Vri Azomindo Opro Cabisa, Zaki da Ifro Cotogris and a Mantri, 
Bisa Patana, Bisa Patana, Gure Konja, Ega Pela, Lotta Patagahi, Zai Pacanino, Epacata, Adabra Coco, Alaki Pandrima, Alaki Bogoko, Adibo Separatis, Korabana. We have the rule over them. Bless the God who has given us the victory. By the victory of Christ, I decree we crush the pieces. We have the rule. We have the dominion. We have the rule, the influence, the authority, the power over these limitations, over these troubles, these challenges. We look for them. We find them no more. By the Holy Ghost, through the abundance of grace, we subdue them. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I would advise you to hold a triumphant amen when I say that. In the name of Jesus. Oh, this is giving reality to expectations, to hard desires. So say after me, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask and I receive, I possess, I have ownership of these desires, of these expectations. Why it is called today? By the Holy Ghost, I declare, as it is written, all things are yours. Therefore, I take ownership of these, of these. Today, I declare, these expectations have become my reality. my reality in Jesus' name. In Jesus. Speak another tongue. So to the lazy baby at the reed and the grass of a Maliko profess the ice gummet. Broke a pillar and a dollar of scuffredo. You repent the best if a dabbing a deal. Java light at the corner. Mean the glassy light. Billy a corner. Mean to a dive a days a days a broken tanga. Pitani mes to go pet the deco, Lutis Avis Dava and the Meha, the Tiger Battle, Mini the Cabo, Lock Ground in the Pelago, Lama City of the Pono, in the Mingo of the Lee of the Dava, Old Jamie of the Tail, Mock of the Java the Spear, Zebra of the Yapto, Mock of the Red Grassy, Lock of Pepper Deep as a Pondo Oma, Mr. Pali, Lock the Lock of the Zara, and the Pondo of the don't you repent the God, 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 you repent the Boko dia, Tumbra, Tumbra, Loka Pedisato, Pitanja, Pita Pisa, Loka Pato, Toko Kiki, Nobri Casato, for your dinner, Conda Dabi, Sepelis of the Cat, Loki Paras Day, the Pokriti Cat, Loka Sun, Pitan, Pitan, Loka the Poa, Pitan, Pitan, Shuki Tundo, the Bees of Nobri Tan, Tumbrita, Nobri Cat. Really, you 
Look in the name of Jesus.